Hello, I'm Colin O'Flynn. I'm the guy behind the Chip Whisperer project. And I also started a company, uh, New AE Technology Inc. And I'm here with that today to show you the release of this Chip Whisperer Pro. So the Chip Whisperer Lite, which is the sort of low cost version, um, and it's fully open source, everything, the hardware about this is open source, uh, the software, FPGA designs, was our introduction to really get as many people as possible into the side channel analysis and glitching and these sort of embedded hardware attacks. Um, the Chip Whisper Pro that I'm here to show you is our version of a higher end hardware. And we've tried to make something that's a little more suited to a laboratory type environment. And as part of that, we have this nice um, case. And so let's go take a look what's inside it. So we're actually waiting on some final orange cases to come in, but this will be the same the same type of shape and size that the final product sold in. And what you have inside this is we basically have, so the new Chip Whisperer Pro, um, I'll show you details of that in a second, but we also have some target boards. So this is our UFO board um, and comes with a standard X Mega and AVR targets, but of course you can get lots of other targets for that. Um, the breakout boards, basically everything else you would need, cables. Um, and one of the new things we're adding uh, just in this kit is there's gonna be some different analog filters. Um, so these will let you do either low pass or high pass uh, filtering as is useful to help improve your, um, your measurements. So let's take a look at this main box first though. So the most obvious change is that this device now has a outer case rather than with the, the Chip Whisper Lite and two part version, sort of a standalone board. We now have something that's a little better protected when it's hanging out on your bench. Um, but beyond that, there are quite a few changes under the hood. So you'll notice even though, for example, we have this, the same sort of uh, input, we have a, a analog measure input, we have a crowbar glitch input, and we have the 20 pin target connector. Um, even though you might think this looks similar to what you've got on the, the Chip Whisper Lite, um, it, this is actually a complete redesign. So we haven't just, you know, put lipstick on the pig type thing. Um, so there's a new baseboard uh, powering this guy and it's actually got a upgraded FPGA. So we go to a Spartan 6 LX45 FPGA and we'll see when we look through some of the features that this gives us a lot more flexibility. Um, we've also, at the same time, you know, improved some of the layout, um, added some shielding around the analog sections and, and whatnot. So um, you should see a little bit better performance uh, on the flip side compared to the, the older Chip Whisperer Lite. Um, but the nice thing is that everything that worked with the Chip Whisperer Lite will basically work with this. So existing scripts, uh, tutorials are all applicable to this guy. Um, so this makes it really easy to continue your work, you know, to start with the light and then upgrade to this um, or do some work on the pro. And then later sort of, if you need to get someone else to do it, you can do that work on the light as well. Um, so besides the, the normal connectors, you also see there's some different, there's an auxiliary uh, in and out SMA here. Um, and this is handy because we actually, the kit comes with a SMA to BNC and as I'll show you, you can use this to trigger a external oscilloscope. Um, so this guy adds some new triggering modes, including triggering on an analog pattern. Uh, so that was in our older, uh, the Rev2 hardware, which doesn't exist anymore. And it's something that we weren't able to fit into the Chip Whisperer Lite, so we brought it back in this guy. Um, you do have a touch screen here. So this is just used to display real-time information about, for example, uh, the, the state of IO pins, you can toggle the target power, um, you can turn on and off right from here. Um, so even though this guy is still designed to be connected to a computer for basically everything, this touchscreen makes it a lot easier to see exactly what's going on. So you can see what sort of length of sample you're going to be collecting. Um, you can see, you know, ADC gain settings. Um, if you're using the glitch, there's a really nice feature here where it's actually going to show you a preview of what a clock glitch will look like uh, if it's working, you know, if it's set up correctly. Um, it counts the number of glitches that uh, are going to occur. And the LEDs at the side here also let you really quickly monitor for any errors with the, the clock status. So this is, a, you know, a common thing if you've used the 
the light, you know that this, this whole hardware is very dependent on a reliable clock source. Um, and this is what makes it different from a regular oscilloscope is the synchronous capture. But it also means you have to monitor occasionally what the status of the, the internal clock that's being derived from your target is. So um, these lights make it a lot faster to, to do that type of work. Um, and so if I just, on my computer here, I'm gonna enable the, the clock module and you'll see right away this light went green. Um, and if I send it a few glitches, you'll see, for example, that if I, if I do one or two glitches, I can see this glitch count um, incrementing. But what's handy is that, for example, let's say I, I had an automated glitch and I'm telling it to send, you know, 100 glitches every time. Um, I can get that feedback right away that they're going through. Or if I turn on continuous glitch mode, which is going to just glitch every cycle, you can see this is incrementing basically at the um, whatever the clock frequency I've set up of the, the device. So let's turn that back off. Um, and the same thing, so any of these clocks uh, frequencies here are getting updated in real time. So if I, if I change on the computer side what um, frequency I'm running at, you know, if I want to say, okay, I want you to run at 20 megahertz, you can see right away this, um, this 20 megahertz clock generator. And we can see the, the ADC. Um, you can see, oh, there's an issue with it. It's not running at the right frequency. Um, so I'll click the button and we can now see it's running correctly. As I mentioned, one of the, the new features is this auxiliary output, um, which is handy if you want to trigger a scope. So let's say, for example, I'm going to set the trigger out to go on the auxiliary pin. Um, we can see it comes up there and this goes turns to an output. Um, and where this is handy is some of the new trigger modes, which include a trigger on sum of absolute difference which triggers on an analog pattern, we can now use that to trigger a, um, an oscilloscope. Uh, so we may want to, you know, use the, the features of this to actually work with additional test hardware we have. And you can do, do that with these new features. So let's take a look at the software side. So here I am running the Chip Whisperer Capture, um, connecting and running the Atmel AES X Mega test as normal. So this looks a lot like the Chip Whisperer Lite. But what's more interesting is that we no longer have to rely on just a simple trigger signal. Um, we can actually use this sum of absolute difference or SAD trigger, which is going to look for a specific pattern in the waveform. So I set a reference area. I tell it to look for those 128 points. Um, and I tell it how closely to look for them. Um, and basically it's going to, in real time, take a look for that pattern in the incoming analog data. Um, and when it sees it, it can trigger the glitch or the ADC to, to do the capture. So you can still use this for both. So there I've just enabled it, and it's actually triggering based on a unique pattern in the waveform. Um, we also have a digital IO decoder. So right now it has um, a UART or SPI, so you can look for specific bytes uh, in either of those protocols. And again, use it to trigger ADC or glitches. Um, so I'm, let me switch this back to the, the regular mode. And what I want to show you now is how we are able to do a lot longer captures. So to start with, the whole system has a bigger buffer. So it has about 98,000 samples compared to the Chip Whisper Lite's uh, 24,000 sample buffer. Um, we also have a down sample factor. So this has actually been backported to the Chip Whisper Lite. And it basically lets you throw away a certain amount of samples. So we can capture, you know, more, um, more samples from the target. It still has that 98,000 sample buffer, but it only stores one in every 12 samples. But the really interesting feature is this new stream mode. Um, so as long as the ADC is running below about 10 mega samples per second, um, and you can, that can be with decimation, you can get it below that. Or in this case, I'm just running it at 7.37 um, mega samples. Uh, so what you see here is I have 500,000 samples. Um, and this is because it's streaming back over USB. So it's not reliant on the internal buffer. Um, so here I've loaded ECC to give you something a little more interesting. Um, AES is just too fast to, to be fun at these long capture rates. So I can do longer. I can do 5 million points here. 
Um, and you can see it's able to, we're starting to see some of the um, ECC calculations going on there. Now, this is going to get really long, even with the synchronous capture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it back to a million points. Um, and I'm going to use a downsample factor. So here I'm going to downsample by, say, 10. And we can see it's going to capture, it's basically capturing 10 million uh, clock cycles. So this will be over a second of the data um, while it's doing ECC. And you can set this downsample factor to anything you want. So I can set it to 100. Um, and this will capture 100 million cycles of the target device. And again, it's it's downsampling that right now, so we just have a smaller amount of data to deal with. But the really critical thing to remember is that the Chip Whisper runs synchronously, so that very first sample that's captured is always the first sample after the trigger um, of the ADC clock. So even though it's going to be downsampling by this 1 to 100 factor, uh, we still will have basically no jitter in the in the data so we're able to see an entire ECC calculation and we even see it finish and transmit some data back over the UR. Um, and let me show you that no jitter feature so let's switch back to a smaller uh, downsample factor so the waveforms look a little nicer and I'll capture a waveform here so you can see it takes a while for ECC to happen um, and I'll capture a second one and I'll just overlay it and you can see right away that um, even though it's equivalent to like this 738 kilosample per second, which if you try to use a scope to capture this, it would be really hard to see this perfect synchronization. Um, we can we can zoom in and we can see that we have amazing synchronization um, right you know right at that point. And interestingly, uh, this ECC implementation there's a bit of a timing error somewhere. Because what you'll see is that you can see these two different paths um, the code is taking. And this ends up depending on the value of one of the random numbers used within the calculation. Um, so in the terminal emulator, it's actually printing the bits, the bits of the number. Um, but what I'm really trying to show you here is that this is maintaining perfect synchronization. Uh, I'm using the new stream feature of the Chip Whisper Pro to capture huge you know, much longer traces than would be possible with the internal buffer. And I can expand on that and use the downsample feature to um, to make that even more useful by, by capturing huge amounts of data, downsampling it so it's not quite as big a hassle to deal with. Uh, so here I found another location where the, the ECC has differed. And again, this is a different bit um, value than the first two traces change. So we can see we can see this difference right in the traces. Um, but yeah, that's a, just a real quick sneak peek of the Chip Whisper Pro. Uh, so there's going to be some more uh, videos showing all of the features, um, some more tutorials. But I wanted to give you a bit of a heads up for what's all involved, um, you know, hardware and software in this new product. And I hope you liked it.